Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the house of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas. And this is the prophetic word program. Uh, the prophecies in your Bible show that we're getting ready for a nuclear war. Now, the Savior spoke of this in uh, Matitia, or uh, if you have a King James Version, Matthew 24, and showing that you're going to see these things. And he said, when you start to see these things, then know that the end is near and the kingdom of Yahweh is at hand and so forth. Well, of course, the kingdom of Yahweh, uh, that was Yahweh's plan from the beginning as, as, uh, Yachanan or John 1 1 says, in the beginning was the plan of Yahweh. The plan of Yahweh, of course, was to make mankind in his image. We find that in, uh, in Genesis, the first chapter, where Yahweh says in verse 26, Then Yahweh said, I will make man in my image, according to my likeness, and they will have rulership. Well, of course, uh, Psalms shows that that rulership is going to be over all the things that Yahweh's hands have created, which is the entire universe. Yahweh is the only one that... Uh, uh, that is recognized as a creator. He can create things out of nothing. Uh, he's the only one that has that power. So uh, when, when we uh, uh, talk about making man to rule over everything that Yahweh's hands have framed, as the Psalms speak, uh, we speak of the entire universe. Yahweh is building a kingdom, and of course that kingdom, as the Savior shows in Matthew, if you got a King James Version, the name is actually Matitia uh, in uh, the original Bible before it was changed. Uh, his name was Matitia, and it means gift of Yahweh, Matitia. Uh, they took out the Yah, of course, uh, which stands for the name Yahweh, uh, and uh, changed the name and took out the name and replaced it with Lord and God, uh, as is shown in Unger's Bible Dictionary, uh, uh, several dictionaries, concordances, uh, uh, encyclopedias. Uh, but his name was Yahweh, and, and of course that's what he is always known by, was uh, Yahweh the Heavenly Father. Uh, of course the Savior said, uh, to pray uh, this way, our Father which is in heaven, uh, holy is your name. Uh, or the King James Version said, hallowed is thy name. Uh, of course, uh, his, his name stands for, for holiness or righteousness. And holy is the name of Yahweh. Righteous is the name of Yahweh. Let all those, as one of the apostles said, let all those who names the name of Yahweh depart from evil. Acts 3.19 says, Repent and be converted so that your sins can be blotted out. Uh, your sins can't be blotted out unless you repent of sin. Uh, and, of course, uh, repenting of sin means turning from sin. And uh, conversion means to turn to righteousness or re Yahweh's righteous laws. Now, this brings to... The prophecy today, we're facing here in, in uh, Matitia 24, we're facing hatred among the nations. There will be kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. There will be famines and pestilence. This is disease epidemics. If you listen to the news lately, the world news, uh, it would seem that everyone in the world has an STD, Everyone in the world has a cancer lurking in their body uh, that could bring them down at any time. Uh, it may be eaten at your heart or your lungs and you don't even know it until the time comes when death is upon you and nothing can be done. Uh, this is where the doctors go in and try to cut, the, cut it out. And, uh, and of course they say once they cut on it with a knife, well it spreads to all the rest of the body so they're really not getting rid of it, and then they try chemo chemotherapy, knowing full well that that doesn't work either, and, uh, and uh, they say, well, we think we got it all, and then later on it comes back. Well, we're seeing, we're seeing these things, and the Savior 
said in verse 33, when you see these things, some of these things that he's naming here, like the disease epidemics, the hatred among the nations. Uh, this is uh, Matthew 24, verse 7. The hatred among the nations has never been so great. The world leaders can't even talk to each other. They're, it's more like they're threatening each other all the time now. And we're seeing these threats arise in nuclear form, uh, nuclear war, the threat of nuclear war, and uh, now they're saying uh, uh, that uh, China is being set up to be hit and taken over. Uh, Russia is also being ch set up to be hit and taken over. Well, these means great nuclear bombs and great, great explosions. The Savior said in uh, Matthew 24, uh, this war can actually blot out the sun. Uh, we know from scientific tests that this is true, that the that uh, the, the the nuclear wars, when they come, and when the uh, the nuclear bombs explode, they will darken the sun, as the scientific tests between the United States and Russia actually prove. So all these things are shown in prophecy, and the Savior said, this is something you're going to see. Well, we're seeing it now. We're seeing it now on, on television. It's almost like being there. And of course, the news media will be there reporting these things, and uh, hopefully, where you will be able to see it. If you if you've watched the news lately, you'll see the hatred among the nations and how they're threatening threatening wars and threatening to do this. If so, if they do that, like the United States saying, "Well, uh, if you cross this red line." Uh, one of them called it a red line. They've crossed the red line now. We've found chemicals in the air. Uh, of course, the explosions have been <laughs> have been hitting uh, drug stores and uh, drug manufacturing companies. I don't know what, how you could keep from finding uh, chemicals in the air or drugs in the air, uh, poisons in the air. That's what uh, drugs are made out of. Uh, but uh, it's almost a laugh because they're they're hating each other so much that they're wanting to get at each other and destroy each other. Now this is the hatred we see in the world today, and and yeah, and the Savior Yeshua Messiah. Yes, they took his name out too and put, and replaced it with words such as Lord and God. The Catholic Church admits this in the in the uh, catechisms of the Catholic Church. That's a book. You can get it for yourself, and it shows that they admit that they took the name, they removed the name of the Savior, and and uh, and the name of the of Yahweh, and uh, and uh, took it out and 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 replaced it with words such as Lord and God. What was it before that? Uh, the the Father's name, the Heavenly Father's name, is Yahweh. Always has been. The the twenty third Psalm. The famous 23rd Psalm. It says in the King James Version, the Lord is my shepherd. In the, in the original, it said Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, and the last verse of that says, I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. They took the name out, put Lord. So the King James Version says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But the original said, I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. Now, in Isaiah 2.2, 2, he says, In the last days I will establish my house in the chief of the nations. The house, my house, house of Yahweh. I will establish my house in the last day. The Savior calls it the last generation. Matthew 24.34 Truly I say to you, that generation shall not pass away until all these things come to pass. That's verse 34. So he limits this. When we start seeing these things, he limits all of this to this generation that we're in right now. When you see these things, that is simple. When you see these things, one of the last things that takes place here before the coming of the kingdom of Yahweh takes over the governments of mankind, one of the last things you see here is 
The sun being darkened, that's in verse 29. Nuclear wars are the only things that would darken the sun. Immediately, but at the end of the tribulation of those days, will the sun be darkened. That's the end of the tribulation. That's when Yahweh steps in and stops the hatred and wars, sickness and disease. Yes, his kingdom will do that. His kingdom would have done it already, but it was rejected by man. But here he says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The powers of heaven will be shaken. We see this in Isaiah 24, uh, where it shows the cause for this. The cause. You really need to get this. You need to write this scripture down and and read it and memorize it, because it shows here that the earth will be shaken. This is verse 18. The earth will be shaken. The earth will reel to and fro. Verse 20. It will reel to and fro. It will sway like a hut. We're going to see some mighty power released. Now, those nations that own this mighty power are the United States, uh, the uh, Russia, and China. Now, they all own these great powers, and now they are, are, as the analysts say, ready to hit China, ready to hit Russia. What are we thinking here? We're thinking nuclear war. Isaiah said that the earth is going to be made waste, that everybody is going to be affected. It will be upon the people as well as the priests, as well as the preachers. Yes, it's going to be upon everyone, No, you're not going to be floated off to heaven, and you're not going to be raptured up. That's a lie that is being told to calm you down, probably. No, you're going to see these things, and you're going to experience what sin brings, because that's what Yahweh shows is causing this. Notice this for yourself in your own Bible. He said, the earth mourns and it fades away. That's what we see taking place now. Everyone on earth has, has a disease. Everyone has a cancer lurking in their body. Everyone has an STD or more than one STD lurking in their body, setting up home and building a home in your body, eaten at one of your organs at this time. Yes, all of this is taking place. You may as well face it. It's there. You could come down. You could die at any moment. You could, you could have a heart attack because of an STD eating at your heart inside. They call it heart tumors, heart, uh, uh, heart cancers. Uh, we had a famous actor uh, that uh, played in The Sopranos. Uh, he died of a heart attack at 51 years old. Just a young man. I'm almost twice that old. This man was 51 years old, and he died a sudden death. But, of course, he'd been going to the doctors, and and, uh, nothing was wrong with him that they could see. And, of course, this is in every one of us right now. Everyone on earth is suffering these things from our past sins and our forefathers' sins. We had another woman, uh, a famous actress, that uh, actually had her breast taken off, because she knew she had these in her genes. Yes. Where, where, where did it come from? It came from sins of her great-grandparents, her grandparents, her parents. Yes, from thee. And Yahweh said it'll go down to the third and fourth generation. They have no record of it or showed no record of it beyond the fourth generation. You know, the, the scripture shows you everything. They show you why you're bringing these sicknesses and diseases upon yourself. Why we're bringing wars. He said in verse 4, The earth mourns and fades away. We see this taking place. The haughty people, that is the top upper class of the earth, languish. Yes, they spend their money. They spend their money for nothing. Getting rid of your breasts won't stop this cancer. Uh, If you got cancer of the breast, you probably got it throughout your whole body. And taking your breast off would probably spread that, that genes that we see in the genes to other parts of your body. From what I understand now, she's planning on another 
because one of her ancestors died of ovarian cancer. Well, uh, you know, uh, th this is, it's lurking in everyone's body. Cutting things out is not going to stop it. In fact, uh, some of the critics say all of this is going to do is spread it more throughout your whole body. You know, th these things, if you don't turn to Yahweh, you're dead. Many of you at an early age, some at a later age, but you're going to die. And of course, this is a fact, a proven fact. Uh, 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 we've seen people uh, have heart attacks on, as is playing football. Uh, I had a, uh, a very close acquaintance to me. Uh, he was a coach in, uh, in uh, one of the uh, major schools and died at 34 years of age just out jogging, exercising, and, and didn't know that he even had it. But it was lurking in his genes, in his body, in some part of his body, caused by STD. What causes STDs? Fornication, adultery, sodomy, bestiality. Those four things cause STDs. The STDs mutate. They breed and mutate with other parts of animals. Yes, if you saw the liquids that come from the private parts of animals, and then you see mankind, and you see this taking place in the earth today, all you got to do is look up bestiality, you know, and you see the sickness that we got going on in the world. They mix those seeds, they mix those fluids, and out comes an STD into mankind that can cross with animal or man, chicken or man. Yes, yes, it's going on there too, as it's shown on, on the internet. All you got to do is look it up and, and read it for yourself. But it's a sick world that we're living in. Well, notice the earth is defiled. Yes, this defiles not only the, t the people that are having these relations, having committing sodomy, committing adultery, committing fornication. If, fornication or, or a woman having more than one lover. Uh, as they, uh, this is the way they put it, having multiple lovers. This causes cervical cancer. Well, of course, this causes an STD. This is how it all starts to begin with. And then that cervical cancer, I'm not just saying this off the top of my head. <laughs> Gotta call any, uh, any hospital, they'll have a booklet there for you to read showing what causes cervical cancer. Now, it doesn't just stay in that one person. Of course, these genes are passed on down to the next generation, the next generation, next generation, next generation. To the third and fourth generation, your Bible says. Third and fourth generation. Well, here we see the earth now weighted down with sin. So heavy a burden this is. The people, white people are dying now faster than they're being born. So we're losing, losing on the population of the whites. It'll soon be so in every other, every other black or color that you can find. But the earth is, is defiled under the inhabitants of it because. Do you notice that word because? Look at it closely. Because they've transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Because of this, the curse has devoured the earth. Because of this. The curse, these curses that we're suffering, not only STDs, cancers, heart attacks, everything like this that's caused by STDs, not only that, but wars, hatred. Yes, their minds are so confused they can't even come to a sensible decision anymore. They can't come up with any answers. School shootings, what caused it? What caused this boy to be confused? Your Bible will show you that in the 18th chapter of Leviticus. Look up, read that chapter and notice the word confusion. Yes, this is what it causes in the mind. People don't just go around with a sound mind and start shooting people, especially women and children. But he didn't know he had it. The doctors didn't know he had it. They didn't know this actor had STDs in his heart. They didn't know he was going to die until he killed over dead. They didn't know this boy was going to flip and start shooting. They didn't know that his mind was so eat up with STDs 
No, they didn't know this, but they do now. <laughs> yes, they know that STDs is causing all sorts of things. Well, the scripture shows you why. Barack Obama, just this past week, Barack Obama calls for an end to Catholic education in Northern Ireland. It says, uh, just two days after Archbishop uh, Ger Gerard M Mueller, Vatican Perfect, speaking of Glasgow, speaking in Glasgow, Scotland, uh, touted Catholic education as a critical component of the church. President Barack Obama stood before a crowd of 2,000 young people this morning and called for an end to Catholic education in Ireland. Barack Obama goes on to show that the Catholic Church can't get along with the other religions. And of course, this was the reason that he said this, but this is exactly what's taking place. Yahweh's, his, Yahweh's plan in Genesis 1, he says, I will make man kind in my image. Now he shows when men practice the laws that will make him into the image of Yahweh, they will have peace, joy, love, and health. But these laws were rejected. In the 10th chapter of, of Genesis, we see a system that Cush fathered called Nimrod. It, that word Nimrod means rebellion. So, so Cush actually publicly fathered rebellion. Now this is what we see in Catholic education. It teaches tradition like Christianity, and, and, but it has different traditions that Christianity doesn't believe in, so they clash. They don't have or will not they will not follow the laws that would bind them together in peace, in harmony, in love, in joy, in healthy minds and healthy bodies. They will not, both of them, Catholic and Christians have rejected these laws. In Daniel, the seventh chapter, we see what is called the, the beast, a beastly system. We see four beastly systems rising up out of the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes that Yahweh brought out of Egypt, uh, con uh, consisting of millions of people, of course. And, and uh, out, of that, out of those 12 tribes, there came forth one strong kingdom after another till they got to the fourth kingdom, which was the Roman Empire. They called it the Holy Roman Empire. Empire, led by what we see now called the popes. Before that, they will call Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians. Now, those four religions were leading religions in that group, and they were plucked up, three of them were plucked up, and they were taken to the seven hills of Rome. Now, when they destroyed the temple, they set Titus, to destroy the, the general, Titus, and you, you look up his name, you'll see what I'm saying. He, he, they sent him to destroy the temple. Before he destroyed the temple, he, took, he removed all the artifacts and, and, to, and transported them to Rome. Then he destroyed the temple completely, pla uh, uh, covered it up, destroyed, uh, uh, took off all the rocks. Uh, 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 not one, Yahshua the Savior said, that, uh, that uh, not one of these stones would be left here on top of another. Speaking of the temple stones, that's in Matthew 24. Now, he also shows that he told his disciples, don't pay any attention to this temple. It's, it's worthless. It's going to be removed and Zion is going to be plowed like a field. All these things are scriptural facts. They move the artifacts to Rome uh, this was the conquest of Titus, the general, the Roman general. He moved them all to Rome, and that's where they are today, unless they moved them somewhere else. But that's what, that is what history shows. That's what the scripture shows. Now, before they were called Catholic, Catholic simply means universal. Before they were 
moved to Rome, they were called Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians. There were about 10 of these religions that were main religions that carried the crowds. Now, Constantine, under the Roman Empire, the great Roman ruling empire of the Roman Catholic Church, he wanted to combine all of these gods that they worshipped together and make one god. Well, he actually gave them two gods. <laughs> Jesus and Christos. Well, this was two gods, but at, and this is where you get the words Jesus and Christ. That's not the Savior's name by any means. These are ancient gods of Egypt. And of course, I, I, we got proof for this. All you got to do is call or write and ask for it. Uh, the booklet called Who Do You Worship? But uh, the fact is, he said, you've got to stop fighting among yourselves and we'll all worship one God. And he himself picked these two gods. And of course, the fights didn't stop. But the fights is over religion. And of course, the difference is, the difference that separates is religion. The P Catholics want one thing, Christianity wants another thing, the Muslims want another thing, but they have all rejected the word of Yahweh. They've all turned to worshiping different gods throughout the centuries here. So Titus, I mean, uh, Constantine, in trying to, he was a, a, a pope, and in trying to stop the fighting, he's the one that picked these two gods and said, this is going to be it. Well, they used that in the King James Version to replace the words Yahshua, the true name of the Savior. The catechisms of the Catholic Church, you can get this for yourself and read it, and it shows these facts. Yes, these are facts that is housed in the Catholic Church, but you can get the book called Catechisms of the Catholic Church, or write, and I'll send you a copy of the page where the, they show that they replace the name with these two gods that they identify as Jesus and Christ in the King James Version. The King James Version was printed, yes, printed by auspices of the Catholic Church. What Barack Obama is saying is that Catholic education can't get along with Christian education because they clash, but they do with every, every other religion. They have nothing to bind them together. If they would go back to Daniel and redo what they did here, they would have something that would bind them. It's called the righteousness of Yahweh. In Daniel 7, it says, this is what they did. These 10 religions here uh, out of the kingdom are 10 kings, that is powers, that will arise and another will arise after them and he will be different from the first and will subdue three kings. That was the other three kings or three religions that moved to Rome. Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians moved to Rome, changed the name to Catholic because they'd taken over the whole world, their historian said, so they are now universal. He will speak great words against Yahweh and will wear out the saints of Yahweh and will think to change the feast days, the appointed days with Yahweh and the laws. And it will be given into his hands until the last three and a half years. That's what Daniel is saying here. Well, what is this that he rejected? The laws of Yahweh. What did he change? You go over to 1 John, and you see here this, this was being taught. They were teaching to do away with the laws. 1 John 3, write this down. Sin. Sin is the breaking of Yahweh's law. 1 John 3, 4, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Verse 7, Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. 
But he who commits sin, verse 8, sin is the opposite of righteousness. This is what the Catholic Church and Christianity and all other religions have done. They have rejected the laws that would bring them to unity, bring them to peace with each other. Not only peace, but joy and loving one another. You see hatred now among the nations, as the Savior said in Matthew 24, 7. You see kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. This comes from religion against religion. And this is what Barack Obama was speaking of. The only way you're ever going to have peace is to go back to keeping Yahweh's laws. As uh, first, first John says, if you have a King James Version, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. He who commits sin, verse 8, is of the devil. First John 3. Read that whole chapter. You really need to read it. The only thing that will solve these problems that we're having right now, sickness, disease, war, everywhere, you will never have health without keeping Yahweh's health law. You will never have peace without keeping the laws of love that Yahweh gives you. Turn back to the laws of Yahweh. Or as the apostle said in Acts three nineteen, repent and be converted that your sins, the breaking of Yahweh's laws, might be blotted out. Your sins are not blotted out unless you repent and convert. They're lying to you when they say just believe. This is a big lie, and the Savior never said anything like that. He didn't say believe only. He said, yes, believe, but believe all that the prophets have spoken. He says, you're a fool if you don't believe all that the prophets have spoken. That's Luke 24, verse 25. Until next broadcast, may Yahweh bless your understanding.